I thought to welcome to this video on hydration. This is part of the nutritional aids, nutritional supplements part of the A-level course. Very, very brief video this one. I'm trying to break it down in, into smaller chunks. So this one goes well with the um, nutritional um, aids part where we're talking about strength based endurance athletes and also glycogen loading and also the legal supplements, creatine, caffeine, things like that. Hydration then, as you can see from this picture, it is a multi that's a billion pound industry worldwide in terms of the brands, what you can buy, how much people spend on them, what they claim to do. We're just going to look at good old fashioned hydration. Why is it absolutely essential for successful sports performance? So the big dangers of dehydration are not staying uh, in correct fluid balance. If we lose 2% of body weight through sweat and it's easy, well, it's relatively easy to monitor that. Weigh yourself before and after a training session or a game or a match, see how much um, weight you've lost. Weigh yourself at half time. You know, little strategies like that can be a benefit because if you lose 2% of body weight through sweating, that can cause up to a 20% drop in performance. That is huge. That is absolutely massive. Now, why is that? Well, as you are losing water, you all, as sweat, you also lose water from the blood, that blood plasma. So your blood becomes viscous, it becomes thicker, and it becomes harder to pump around the body. If it's harder to pump around the body, we get reduced blood flow to the skin, which is going to cause an increase in body temperature. Remember, the reason that you send blood to the skin during exercise is so that you uh, pass the heat that is in the blood closer to the skin surface so we can conduct and evaporate the heat away from the body and we can you know, maintain our core temperature. Well, with less blood flow to the skin, because the blood is thicker, I'm not going to be able to do that. My body temperature is going to increase. Also, as well as having reduced blood flow to the skin, I'm going to have reduced or decreased blood flow to the muscles. Now, that is going to increase fatigue. Why? Well, think about what the blood's carrying, oxygen and glucose, carbohydrates. So if I can't pump as much blood to the muscles, again, because it's viscous, it's not running as well, it's thicker, then I'm not going to be able to deliver as much oxygen, I can't deliver as much glucose and carbohydrates. So that's a big issue there. Because the blood is also thicker, my heart is going to have to work harder to pump it around the body. So I'm going to have an increased heart rate as well. And also... Because blood flow is thicker, because it's hard to pump around the body, redu potentially reduce oxygen delivery to the brain, and that's going to slow down decision making and my skill production. So all those added together is going to lead to a massive drop in performance. So that's why it's essential that I stay on top of my hydration. Now there's constant debate going on what's better, just drinking plain good old fashioned water or sports drinks. They're both very short. If you're dehydrated, drink either, whatever's at hand. Uh, what one of the advantages that electrolytes has over, uh, sorry, one of the advantages that sports drinks has over uh, plain water is the concentration of electrolytes and glucose. So we're going to look at each of those now, and then we've pretty much done this topic. So let's start with electrolytes. So electrolytes is a posh term for salts, body salts and minerals. So you might have uh, spotted that your sweat tastes salty whenever you start to sweat a lot and particularly it's on your face and you can taste it that's because as you're sweating out water you're also sweating out your electrolytes as well electrolytes such as sodium potassium chloride magnesium if you drink a lot of mineral water these minerals i.e these electrolytes will be found in there um, and it's the, the the big consensus is it's these electrolytes or the loss of these electrolytes that leads to cramp and uh, so if you can replace electrolytes as well as fluid you will prevent or, you know, prevent cramps or minimise their effects or quicker reco uh, have a quicker recovery if you're suffering from cramps at the end. So that's one of the advantages that sports drinks has over plain water is that it replaces these electrolytes as well. So that's electrolytes. Now let's look at the gl uh, glucose concentration of sports drinks. And as you might be aware, we have different classifications of sports drinks. We have hypotonic, isotonic and hypertonic. So let's have a look at each one now to finish off with. So hypotonic drinks then, the word hypo means low levels of or less than. So when we if you watch videos and I've spoke about hypoxic or something like that, low levels of oxygen, hypotonic means low levels or low concentrations of glucose. Your bloodstream, the glucose in your blood, if you're eating a normal diet, will have anywhere between 5 and 8% glucose in your blood. So hypotonic sports drinks have lower concentrations of glucose in them than your blood. So typically 4% glucose or less. These are drinks where, or athletes who take these, are ones who require fluid replacement over energy. So maybe they've got plenty of energy. Maybe they've been eating lots of carbohydrates and they've built up to their event. 
but their priority is fluid replacement with an, an added boost of a small amount of energy. That is why you would drink a hypotonic sports drink that provide quick fluid replacement and small amounts of energy. I've just added this text here, but just coming back to this one, who might take these? People who are interested in hydration, but are also trying to monitor their body weight effectively. So things like jockeys, gymnasts, where they want to rehydrate, but they don't want to put on excess weight because it would be detrimental to their event. So moving on to isotonic then, this is probably the big one. This is the one that most of us drink and consume. Iso means same. So these drinks contain the same levels of glucose in them as what we will typically find in our bloodstream, around about five to 8% glucose. As a result, they're absorbed into our body at the same rate as plain water. So they rehydrate us very effectively and they supply us with decent levels of glucose for energy production. So middle distance runners, footballers, rugby players, where you're trying to maintain constant uh, body weight and you're also trying to rehydrate effectively, which is, you know, the majority of athletes out there. That is why they will take isotonic sports drinks. So finally then, hypertonic. These are probably ones that, as a... As a group, collective group of people, we use least, but pro athletes will use them a fair amount. Just as hypo meant less, hyper means more. So these are the drinks that contain high levels of glucose than you found in the blood, around 15%. So, you know, double, maybe even triple what we'd normally find in our blood uh, sugar levels. So these are usually used after performance as a way to replace fluids and fuel that you've lost during a game. So it's often used by ultra endurance athletes, people who do iron men's and things like that. Um, the reason they are used after is because this is such a high concentration, 15%, that glucose actually slows the rate at which you absorb the water into your body. So these aren't great at rehydrating you quickly. These two are very good at rehydrating you quickly. This one is actually quite poor at rehydrating you quickly. So you wouldn't want to use it during an event ideally because you know, it's, you're not going to rehydrate effectively and dehydration is going to stop you long before you run out of fuel. So this is something very much to use after an event. As I said, it will rehydrate your body at a slower rate uh, and it will top up a lot of the fuel that you've burnt off during your event. So those are hypertonic sports drinks. So they're the three classifications and why you would use each one and when you would use each one. Hope you found this video useful, folks.